do the thumbs up. <laughs> Welcome to worship with United Church of Fayetteville. Every week since we've returned to the sanctuary, I look around and see all the faces, more or less, masked and unmasked, and I'm very grateful to see those faces. Then I look around and I see, realize there are faces, many faces, I don't see. And I only hope that they are with us from wherever they are and worshiping with us from afar. I'm grateful for the technology that allows them to do that and that they are, we are all worshiping together while still apart. I'm thankful for the gift of presence and the gift of time that will ultimately bring us all together again in this place. And then we can say, welcome to, you, to worship at, at United Church of Fayetteville. Through a difficult couple of years, we've been fearful from time to time, fearful of illness, of the condition of the world around us, of an unknown future. The quote I have on my desk says, when you are grateful, fear disappears and abundance appears. In gratitude for a faith that sustains us, let us worship the Lord.
Please join me in prayer. Most gracious God, each morning we can praise you for a new day to try again to do your will. Each evening we can thank you for the day now past and the opportunities you placed before us to show your love. You bring us second chances and abundant choices for ways to show our gratitude for your loving care and many blessings. For this, for the beautiful world you have given us, and so much more, we praise you, we thank you, and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. People of God, and we are, <clears throat> so often we forget from whence our blessings flow, taking them for granted, even as our due. We now come before God to ask his forgiveness for our complacency and our lack of awareness. Please join me in our unison prayer of confession. Merciful God, we often say to others, God has been good to us, but too often we forget to say it to you. We speak of counting our blessings, but too often we only tally our woes. Forgive us by the power of your spirit. Help us to truly express in word and in deed the depth and height of our gratitude. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Among the many gifts God showers upon us every day is the gift of forgiveness. In the name of his son Jesus, he assures us we are forgiven. And in his name we go forth to try again another day, grateful for his forgiveness yet again. As we dedicate the offerings we make this day, please join me in prayer. <clears throat> Today, O oh Lord, we have brought our offerings to this space, dedicating them to your work in this church and in our world. Let us be grateful for our ability to bring and share these gifts, and may they be visible demonstrations of your love. This we do in the name of Jesus, to whom we pray and serve. Amen. Our first scripture today comes to us from the book of Psalms, a portion of Psalm 100. Let us listen together for God's word for us on this day. Know that the Lord is good. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to the Lord and bless his name. For the Lord is good and the Lord's steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let us join our praise to the psalmists and sing of the glory that we are offered. God's word continues from the letter of first Peter again let us listen be hospitable to one another without complaining like good stewards of the manifold grace of God serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. God always blesses the reading, the hearing, the understanding, and especially the living of the Holy Word. 
Please join me in prayer. Gracious God, on this sunny morning with a gentle breeze, we pray and trust that that breeze, that breeze bears your spirit, enlivens your word, and empowers us to carry your word into the world in all that we do and say. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Even though the calendar page has not yet flipped to October, the season is upon us, the season of pumpkin lattes. A few weeks ago, I was at dinner with friends, one of those rare occasions these days, and I was startled in response to someone's inquiry when the waitress smugly informed us, no, we don't have any trite pumpkin drinks. Her smugness may have been premature because it was soon revealed that they had pumpkin in ravioli and not one but two pumpkin desserts, neither one of which was pie. Decorations have turned from bright summer flowers to pumpkins and chrysanthemums. They evoke feasts to come and Wegmans is now blowing fans across its cinnamon pine cones. Now, while I am not a fan of lattes in any form, Autumn is one of my favorite seasons. When I, the scents and the colors, the decorations, the crisp air, all looking past Halloween and to Thanksgiving, and yes, there are turkey decorations out there too. It's a day, that day, when we're sure to say a table blessing, even if we don't on other days. We take turns saying what we are thankful for. The traditional litany of health, family, love, turkey wings, or stuffing and there's nothing wrong and everything good about giving thanks for those things, which are good and important things for which to give thanks and to appreciate. But the list is limited by imagination and appreciation. Our spirits might be better served if along with the decorations of the season so early in view, we might begin our practice of giving thanks early as well. We might be surprised at what we learn about our lives and their richness. Eckhart Tolle wrote, it is through gratitude for the present moment that the spiritual dimensions of life open up. Gratitude does not come naturally. It is learned, it is not inborn. We learn it by watching people express thanks, the outward expressions of the inward feeling of gratitude. Our children and grandchildren will learn from us by seeing our practices of appreciation, worship, thanksgiving, and offering. Nor is gratitude a feeling that can be evoked on command. One can't just say, be grateful, and people are grateful. Ask any parents who has ever uttered a sentence beginning with the words, you should be grateful that you if that instruction ever invoked anything besides eye rolling. Gratitude isn't a natural thing, and it's not a thinking thing. It is an attitude that comes through spiritual practice and attention to our world. It's not an easy thing. It takes discipline and practice. Gratitude is the polar opposite of taking things for granted, accepting things as our due, or considering what we have to be things we have achieved on our own without regard to inheritance, advantage, opportunity, blessing, or the giver. Gratitude is a hard attitude to achieve and maintain. Like anything worth doing well, it takes practice and more practice. You're hearing the word practice. But it is a lively practice that bears richness for lives full and joyful. Acknowledging that we have received much does not denigrate our own achievements and need not lessen our sense of accomplishment about how we have responsibly used what we have received. Rather, gratitude can help us keep our lives in perspective. It can serve to reassure us that we are not alone and that all does not depend on us. Gratitude can serve the very practical purpose of lowering our stress levels and reducing our anxieties. 
there is an ancient proverb, not from our tradition, which says, and I think we just already heard this this morning because someone has it on their desk, when you are grateful, fear disappears and abundance appears. I just feel the need to mention again that I wrote nothing that was said prior to standing, my standing up this morning. Okay. Always like it when people preach my sermon before I get there. Okay. But gratitude is more than an attitude. It's a worldview. Although it begins there, and it is certainly one we can all practice in developing. One year here, we spent six weeks on Sundays writing one-sentence prayers of gratitude as our prayer of praise in worship, and we posted them on the bulletin board. By week five, people were tired, they didn't post anything, and some were bored, and told me that, many told me, I can't think of anything. Shame on us. Expressing gratitude takes energy. It takes energy just to think of things. But expressing gratitude is also not just saying what we are grateful for. Gratitude is responding to what we have received, using our gifts well, but it also takes into account sharing. It takes energy to think of appropriate responses. A curious thing, because we are daily presented with more options for grateful response than we can possibly respond to. This year, I want us to try a different way of practicing gratitude, because as has been mentioned once or twice, gratitude takes practice. Included in last week's or this week's weekly email was a perspective shared by Betsy, encouraging us to write our own headlines each day. Couple still in love. Children are healthy. The sky is blue. We are gathered together. School is open. I have a job. I got a flu shot. I can afford groceries. My friends comfort me. In this season, this season of autumn, this season of Thanksgiving and gratitude, let's see if we can all write five personal headlines of thankfulness each day. Someone sent me this quote this week. I'm not sure who, what the source is. Be thankful every chance you get, not because life has been easy, perfect, or exactly as you anticipated, but because you choose to be happy and grateful for all the good things you do have and all the problems you know you don't have. Everything we might name comes to us as gift. So let us reflect daily on those gifts and set our imaginations free to help us discern and respond with active expressions of gratitude. For again, gratitude is more than just thinking thank you. It is giving thanks in various and appropriate ways. And such practices give birth both to the feeling and the expression of gratitude. Then it may be for us, as Henry Nouwen wrote, Perhaps nothing helps us make the movement from our little selves to the larger world than remembering God in gratitude. Such a perspective puts God in view of all of life, not just in the moments we set aside for worship or spiritual discipline, not just in the moments when life seems easy." End quote. Sometime this week, Every household should receive the stewardship mailing with the dream budget for 2022. No one needs me to say, but I'll say it anyway, due to the pandemic, the years 2020 and 2021 did not contain many days when life seemed easy. Yet we can write many congregational headlines for which we might be grateful. We had money to purchase equipment to keep us connected. We have volunteers learning to use that equipment. We have musicians who mastered new skills and provided music, often in less rewarding, sometimes frustrating, means and less connected ways than to which they were accustomed. We maintained our building. We did drive-bys of our homebound folk. We stayed connected with pictures and greeting cards and phone calls. We served our neighbors with donations of cash and with people, goods gathered from the wider, wider community. We learned new things. We stayed faithful in the struggle. We had a COVID-19 task force. By the way, that puts us on a short list. 
we are able to gather together. Our board has done a great deal while significantly below a full complement of elders. Gardeners have kept the building sightly. People who share our space are returning. We have been blessed with many volunteers to keep us safe, open and care for the building, usher, greet and serve as liturgists, and we can pay our bills. That's the short list. As we prayerfully consider our giving in the days ahead for 2022, let's use these and other headlines, both personal and congregational, that you might write to increase our awareness and strengthen our attitude of gratitude, that our expressions of gratitude might be responsive and proportionate to all the gifts we have received. And please do send me those headlines and I'll share them in the weekly email to all our grace and benefit. Let us engage in this lively practice of exercising gratitude, paying attention to the details of our days and how they come to bless our lives. We may be surprised at how much we haven't noticed for a long time. We may be surprised at how the practice of gratitude brings us new life as individuals and as a congregation. Amen. Let us be gathered in prayer. Compassionate God, we turn to you, offering up the concerns of the world and lifting the cries of our neighbors. In these brilliant autumn days, we pray for those whom the light, for whom the light has turned dim, where health of body, mind, or spirit is at risk or declining.
on those who serve and protect and heal and respond, take risks and potentially lose their lives. where storms wreak havoc on lives, education, and health. Where hunger, homelessness, and lack of opportunity dims the light of hope. where terrorism reigns and peace is a fleeting vision. For all these places and people and concerns, we join together with you and with one another and with people of good faith in every place to touch with compassionate hands, to sustain with prayer, to serve meals and do disaster cleanup, and to breathe peace in every setting. We pray with the silent meditations of our hearts and with the prayer your son taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>